You're listening to Adi Shokbe Live, the Afrobeat podcast. Right. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, a face-to-face meeting with one of my brothers that has done incredibly well in the Afrobeat, Afropop culture, getting close to like five, six, seven years now, is the one they call Keshiro. Lil Kesh, what's up, brother? Shopsy, big bro, respect. Listen, respect. I've got to be honest with you. Um, I'm super excited to see you doing what you love doing. I was very happy to hear that you put a project out. Um, and by looking at you and hearing from you, I can tell you you are in an incredible space. How have you been, bro? Yeah. Oh, man. It's been a long journey, bro. I'm glad to be here, bro. I've been good, I would mm-hmm. say. Been through the ups and the downs, even when it looked like everything was good. But man, I'm just gonna, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say I've been good, and I'm grateful that I'm here. Listen, man, I see you. Uh, I see a, a, a little bit of muscle in there as well. You know, like you know. <laughs> come on, trust me. Like I said, talk um, to me. The old time when it seemed like I was away, I was off the scene, right? I, I did yeah. work on myself a lot. And when I say body, mm. mind, and soul, I mean body, mind, and soul, you know? Body-wise, mm. I had to start working out because it did, it did a lot to help me psychologically, apart from just the look. And yes, the look as well. Yeah. I'm obviously sexier now, you know? But, um, <laughs> you know, and um, I had to work on my diet as well, you know? Yes. I consume a lot of what I should be consuming. I started meditating as well. Um, yeah, man. Body, man, and soul, everything. Music Listen, is all, um, yeah. one of the, the, the things that a lot of people forget, because you became so big, people forget that you were extremely young when this stardom and everything came to you. Talk me through the time when you became such a huge star worldwide, and yet you were just a young person. What was your emotions like? How did that fame affect Lil Cash? Mm. I'm glad you're the one who's bringing this up and I, I didn't even have to personally shed light on that. Mm. I feel like a whole lot of people did not realize how young I was. Mm. I was young, Shopsy, you remember? Yeah. First time I set my eyes on you was that show we had... Um, 2015 or 2016? No, 2014, bro. 14. 2014, late 2014. That was my very first time um, even flying out to anywhere. Mm. I've never even been on a plane to Abuja or nowhere. First time I got on a plane, was to London. That was wow. the Shaki period, you know. I yes. had one before on that show as well. I was a kid, Shepsi. You know, mm. I felt like I felt like um I could handle it, but I crashed. Mm. I did. It was too much to handle. It was too much. When I got my record deal, I was nineteen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then as I towards the end of the year when Shaki came into the picture and all of that, um, I was twenty. Yeah. So it was too much. It was too much. I mean I had a very stubborn ego in whatever whatever space I find myself, I feel like I could pull through. You know, mm. my mom always said that as well as a kid, even when I'm sick, like I'm the one who is saying no, I'm not sick. I'm the one who is saying I'm fine. It would, mm. I would have to get to that point where I can't handle it no more. And mm. that's when it's not obvious that oh something is wrong with you. Same with um the the whole stardom and fame and everything. It was too much. I crashed mm. at some point, I won't lie. I didn't even know how to process the fame. I didn't know how to process. um, um, And then there was was the responsibility as well. Because I wasn't born with a silver spoon. You know, there was the responsibility. There was the fame, you know. There were the relationships as well. Because there were a whole lot of, there were a whole lot of spotlight on me as a dem. So there were the girls. I mean, I've always been disciplined with the girls. But you know, relationships also affect our life in a very major way. Do you understand? So having to go through all of that within that period of time, it got to that point where I knew, okay, chill, can't take this anymore. Mm. I just need to step back a little bit and go work on myself. Listen, man, um, you know, a little summary about you was that you got signed at 19 to YBNL, the incredible Olamide Bado, he put you yes, on. Sir. And a single went off, you had Lil Kali, you had Shoki, and the whole world heard of your voice, you came into the UK, was smashing festivals and concerts, 
you know, one of the most iconic moments was you jumping in a 5,000 capacity crowd. I can never I forget think. myself. I th <laughs> oh, I can never forget. That's that, that the forever thingy. People would, it would always be talked about, and it would always be one of my favorite moments as well, mm -hmm. you know? It's crazy. I remember the night, and I'm like, yeah. are you going to catch me? Should I jump? Are you sure? Are you sure? Like, I think we're using the wrong word. I didn't jump. I flew, fam. You, did you flew see the into it. Did you see the distance of um? Yes. The distance of the crowd from the stage. Absolutely. I flew. Absolutely. Crazy. So you had your your debut album. You know that album was absolutely amazing. Hits yeah, after yeah. hits after hits, and obviously your contract ran out with YBNL, and you decided to go on your own. Was that a big responsibility for a young man to take by himself, leading was, your leader, your own label? Extremely big, bigger than I'd even imagined, you know? You know, bigger than imagined. And to correct you on that, it was not a matter of my contract was over and I left. It was a matter of the contract was over and it was over, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, and that's always been a lot of days. Um, he has always projected that for... I mean, Absolutely. the very first set of, of artists he, he signed, me and uh, me, you know, Victor, Adikule Gold included, the very first yeah. set of artists he signed, he just wanted two years, you know. Yeah. He wanted us to get to that point where, you know, we, we could stand by ourselves and start pushing from different spots again because that made the whole movement grow. We all grew together. But mm. yeah, coming back to your question, um, that was too much responsibility for, for someone who was going through that at that particular time, you know. You mentioned the fact that, you know, that it was the fame, those relationships. How much as well was the lifestyle? Maybe drinking, maybe alcohol, maybe smoking, maybe. How much was that also part of what really put you in that dark space? Or did it, it did not play a role at all? Of course it did, man. Of mm. course it did. Down to the alcohol, down to the smoking, you know. And I mean, I was young as well. At some point, I felt like I smoked way more than I'm supposed to. Hmm. And it did affect me one way or the other. And he also, at some point, he also became, um, what's the word for it? You know? Like it's a awesome. lifestyle. And apart from lifestyle, it just, it just it also became something to run to. When you're, hmm. when, you don't, when you're tired of the reality at that particular time, it became yeah. an escape. Do you understand? Hmm. And then when I said I took some time out to, to work on myself, um, things like that were part of it as well. Man, I'm gonna say, man, I just I feel like I feel like I've got so much grace, so mm. much grace, man. Because I've, I'm the first son. I don't even think it's about being the first son or being. Um, I don't think it's about being the first son only. But um, I've always been a very disciplined person. Yeah. Right? Those who know me know me. Like when it comes to women, I've never been like a womanizer like that, I've been so disciplined. People who knew me from way back, if they, if they, I know I've always been around the scene. When it comes to video shoot and all, they would always tell you, Kesh is too serious. Kesh comes to the video shoot, they are the models and all of that. He plays with them to get them in, in a good mood, so he gets mm. good shots. He's done, he's out. Do you understand? Mm. I've been so, I've been so disciplined. Even when it came to, you know, um, all the, um, recreational things as well, yeah. alcohol and all. To an extent, I would say I was disciplined. For a young boy who had access to all that money, yeah. to all that fame, could have done way worse than what I mm. so, Talk um, to me about how um, important your upbringing and your family background, what kind of role that played in getting you back to where you are now? Um, um, uh, a lot, man. A lot, man. It was at, it was at um, times like this that I started appreciating family the most. Mm. It was so easy to get lost. It was so mm. easy to get lost, you know? And I started reconnecting with my people back, you know? At some point, I never even realized that they're so far away. But, man, when you talk, you said background, right? Yes. It helped in a lot of ways because me being here today, I'll give all of that to God as well. Grace brought me back. To be honest, mm. I've seen one of the darkest days I would like to you. Yeah? But grace brought me back, you know, lots of prayer as well because of my, I'm from a, um, a Christian family. That's our background. I mean, yeah. I'm both. You know, I don't yeah. see, I don't see, um, I don't see the difference in 
being a Christian and being a Muslim because yep. I was born into a Muslim family. I was Christian as a as um as a Muslim um mm. baby, right? And then a few years after that we became Christian, but we've always been so religious. Religiously mm. that played a role. Discipline wise as well, that did play it, it did it also played a role. Because, yeah. You know, I feel I feel like the fact that I'm disciplined to an extent, I'd have to give some of that to my parents and all. I mean, or call me, but me go say, I'm sure I'm call. Do you understand? Yeah. So, yeah, they did play a role. And I would say, yes. And I would also say, um, for me to be here today as well and be able to retrace my step and Facts. find myself again musically, also yeah. add to, I would also attribute that to my background as well because my music, um, my, my talent and um, the music sense is has it's been from way back. Like I said, like my dad is a pastor as well. Yeah. Like I started in the church, started from playing drums to writing songs for choirs, for being a chorister myself, you know. So yeah, did it play a role in bringing me back? I mean, like I now, saw... I feel like, I feel like, you know, I, I make music like the new cash of 2015, 2015, 2016. Absolutely. Again. I saw yeah. I saw an Instagram live that you were on about two weeks ago. I recorded the whole thing and I shared it on my page. And okay. you just went into praise and worship in the process of a recording session. You just stopped yeah. recording and you yeah. started to praise God. And it became... Yeah, a praise and worship session. I recorded the whole thing. I shared it on my page a couple of weeks ago. Tell me about, you know, those moments where you're in the studio to do something else, but you just felt the need to praise God. Ah, um, uh, that's just, that's, that's, that's a grateful act, being grateful. Hmm. You know, like I said, I'm in a better place. I'm in a better space. And I just wanted to be grateful. And I've now come to the, uh, the realization about yeah. that all I have is given to me from God. Mm. As regards to the talent of all, like God is the number one musician. Everything, right. I don't care how, how talented you are, I don't care how sweet your voice is, I don't care. Like, I don't want to know. All you've got, all I've got is just like a drop from, from the ocean, mm. you know? As regards to as regards to what God has got, so if God gave me the grace to um, if He gave me the grace to have this little talent, why don't I use it to give back to Him? Do you understand? Facts. That's it, basically, man. Fam, I'm a pastor, man. I've always been growing up like my dad is a pastor, right? And I was his first son, so people have always people have always felt like um, you're gonna be a pastor when you grow up. You're gonna be a pastor. I said no doubt, but not mm. necessarily like my dad is. Yeah. Right? I'm going to do it from my own angle. I do have a voice right now. I, I definitely have a voice right now. So once in a while, if I could use it to, I don't know, but like from doing that live, I don't know how many people tuned in, but if, if, if like 10 people tuned in, I it was amazing. Like at worst, at worst, I, I maybe f I made two or three, or even if it's just the press and feel like, it, oh, it, that little guy can't really sing all that song. Does he yeah. worship God this much? I think I need to like give my life to Jesus as well. Give Absolutely. my life to Christ or irrespective of what religion he, he decides to go into. You know, I just want to give back, man. God is giving me and I want to give back to you too. That's, that's lovely to hear, man. Let's talk about the music industry. Since you were working on yourself, what are your thoughts about where the music industry is right now and what the likes of uh, Zlatan and Naira Mali are, are doing for, for street hip-hop and stuff like that. Even though you were one of the first people alongside Olamide Bado that endorsed yeah. Naira Mali first years and years ago. What are your thoughts okay. about how we be, you know, where he is now and where the scene is? Man, I'm just, it's, it is grown to be honest, man. And I'm so happy for the growth. And I'm mm. also grateful to have been one of the people, you know, at the forefront of, at the forefront, the beginning of the old Afrobeat um, movement, street wise and all of that. Yes. Well. Yeah, but I mean, it's come so far. I love the growth and I'm happy to be back and be a part of it as well. Yeah. Now, this album, before this album, right, there was a yeah. single that you released a couple of years ago that received a lot of backlash featuring Olamide. I'll tell you something. Personally, yes. I felt that that record had everything it had to go. 
apart from the the negativity. The, the negative donation and the yeah. impact it, the response it got from the public yeah what were your thoughts about that that you know the way people reacted did you feel like artistic freedom was being stifled or you understood where people were coming from um both man the it's just the intentions were the intentions were right but the way um it was being put out yeah maybe it was wrong i felt like number one we were misunderstood and i also felt like we could have done better in passing across and the message wherever we were mm. I mean, that was things. that. But now the album is here. Um, I I've listened to the album. EP actually, that's an extended the, thing. That's an that's eight tracks, bro. Yeah, bro. But I mean, wow. it's still a body of work. Be it, be it an yeah. EP or be it an album, it's still body. It's work, a body of which work. Which I put um, so much work into. You know. Talk to me about making that project, and you know the incredible people you worked with. Going back, working with the likes of Young John Fields. You know that kind of Naira Mali, putting Naira Mali on the record, incredible record featuring Fireboy as well. Talk to me about this body of work, bro, and what it was like for you yeah, making it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, like I said, like I've been, I've been through one of the worst pieces of mental health. I like to just chip that in and talk about that because, mm. um, sorry, one second, put it on one. Yeah. Like, I like to shed light on that because when I was in them dark places, to everybody that shed light on mental health, it meant a lot to me. Mm. So I'm out of it, man. Like I see the light again. So I only just want to use my voice or any any means of 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 sharing or an interview yeah. or something. I want to use it to share with people as well. So yeah, man, it was it was just the happiness. Like it just hit me that oh man, I don't feel the way I used to feel no more. I'm happy. I'm in a better place. I'm definitely gonna make music for it. And then mm. that's what I did with ecstasy. Um, also, with the guys on ecstasy, if you could, if you could, if you see, those are like, like people that I know. Genesis. Absolutely. The only person that's on the EP who Shable. I just, yeah, who I just Shable. recently met, and it was not even, it was not even a case of, it was not even, a, it was not, it was not a case of, um, oh, okay, somebody that's it or something or this thing it was a matter of energy. Do you understand? Absolutely. Like when I go on the phone with Shabo, she was like, hey, is it because I love you? Is it because I care? Trust like, me. She does love me, you understand? Then that was when it clicked. Yes, for mm. making music. Do you understand? Down to Fireboy, that's that's my brother, you know, that's yeah. family. Down to Naramali, everybody knows. Do you understand? Um down to Young John, that's my brother from another mother. Like that was mm. one person I would say I have one of the Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. That's yeah. one person I'll say. Maybe someone's trying to call him. I have one of the strongest bonds. Yeah, man. Apologies. Um, yeah. That's one person I'll say. I have one of the strongest bonds. Coming to when he was just a producer. Young John is yeah. more than a producer now, you know? Yeah, He's man. A musician. Yeah, considering the song he did. Did on, on track five. Yeah. Man, he's an actual musician, but um, see the songs Young John's, Young John has produced for me in the past, um, from my fair Joku to you know to um to BC to is it because I love you? The list is endless, but yeah, man, yeah, man, that's my brother. And I'm excited. Everybody on the project were finding me basically. Absolutely. I'll tell you something, right? You see Shabo, um, yeah. when I started supporting Shabo like a year and a half ago, the reason why I did was because she went on BBC One Extra, the rap show, and she mm -hmm. was rapping in Yoruba. And that gave me the energy that I got from you, that I got from Olamide Bado. And Bad she continued to do the same thing. So when I yeah. saw her name on your project, I was so excited. I'm like, yo, this fits so much, and the record is absolutely fantastic. And yeah, it's great to you. see that people from you know different worlds that represent pretty much the same culture can connect that way, even though it was over the telephone. That was brilliant to see, bro. Appreciate it. I mean, yeah. I love Shabo, man. She killed it. Mm. Downtown girl with Shabo and ecstasy. She killed it.
no doubt, man. What's and she's just so talented, man. Goddamn, like, like she's coming. Shebo is coming. She's got, yep. she just got so much fire in her. And then when mm. she delivers, you know, oh, this person is coming. She's Absolutely. Yeah, so, what's your aspirations for this project? What do you wish for this project to do? Coming back after a while, um, and and what? Yeah, what's next for it? Initially, when I decided to um, come up with this project was was um earlier this year in january and um initially it was just okay okay like even when i was away it's not like i was 100 percent away like yeah. i was still in in the same but like it was just pop up and gone pop yeah. up and, and it was also because i just dropped just bare singles yeah and, all of that. and i was not like okay like there's this new feeling which i need to share with my fans I need to share with people as well and i can't just share with you with a song like, rather than give you a single, we're gonna give you an extended play so you can really, 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 really feel cashy, right? And yeah. right now, at this point, the project is amazing. I'd say the acceptance is is so much, and I feel like it's gonna do way more than uh, my expectations. So, Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Listen, uh, my brother. Um, again, I said it at the beginning. I'm super proud of what you've done at this young age where you've been and what you've gone through especially what you've put out you're looking amazing i'm happy that you're here we're definitely going to be supporting you again we're back on the little cash wagon i can you imagine of all people shops to do i don't think essentially ep did that cash. I've, I've, cash. you need to send it to me bro i will man i definitely will i'm sorry you need man. to so so really really thank you very much for joining me before you go yeah, i'd like you to pleasure. just introduce yourself little cash Blah, 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 and, and this is Ade Shokwe Live. Okay. Yo, guys, I go by the name of Liu Kesh. And you guys are watching. You're listening to Ade Shokwe Live, the Afrobeat podcast. Right. 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 Right.